So let me just title that. Um, so this would be recap of intro, everything's introduction <laughs> to wave mechanics. So this is the first view of a fully quantum mechanical approach. And I would like to start out with a bit of a mathematical statement, which is that, um, that there exists, or, you know, this is the math proof symbol for there exists a wave function that's a function of position and time. And this position is potentially three-dimensional position. Um, and what's special about this wave function is that it contains everything there is to know about the setup. So there exists a wave function that contains all information about the state. Let me not define what state is. I had a upper division quantum mechanics professor who actually started out with something like that. Um, he had a postulate of quantum mechanics, he called it. I'm not going to go that far because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was a particle physics theorist. I think he felt more comfortable doing that. I'm not going to call this postulate, but we are going to use this as a starting point. It's an important statement to, to make as a starting point. Because when we do wave mechanics, um, the rest of what we do is we are pulling information out of this wave function. So we need a... Um, we need a way to measure things. Um, um, well, we need a bunch of things. Uh, a way to measure physical observables. And I'm going to make a suggestion that um, what I'm calling physical observables, measurable quantities, at this point in the game, we really have only three observable, three basic observables we need. Once we can measure those three, all the other quantities we can kind of construct out of them. And those physical observables are, we need to be able to measure position, we need to be able to measure momentum of the state, and we need to measure, able to measure energy of the state. And how to measure these observables? Um, physical observables are measured using operators and let me just uh, give them a symbol um, or give them symbols so the position operator would be that symbol and i'm going to put a head on it to distinguish it from the measurement position and for momentum same symbol i'm going to put a head on it to distinguish it from the, the measured momentum and the energy I'm going to put a head on it. And the way measurements are made, measurement goes like, so this is where it's important that we said the wave function contains all the information. So we are trying to pull this information out of the wave function. And for simplicity's sake, I'll say this wave function has a definite value of position, definite value of momentum, definite value of energy. And for this mythical wave function that has those definite values, the way it would work is, well, we take this wave function, we operate on it with the operator, and if it has the definite value of position, then we'll get the same wave function back. The, this thing that's a function of position and time will have the same function back, and uh, we'll have some numerical value here that wasn't there before. And this is the measurement. This is the measured value of position. And the same goes for momentum. Uh, acting on the wave function with the operator, will, if uh, the wave function has the definite value of momentum, we'll get the same wave function back multiplied with some number. And this number will be the measure of the value. Same thing with the energy. We'll have the, uh, if this wave function has definite value of energy, we'll get the same wave function back. And there will be some number 
that's in front of it. That will be our measurement of energy. It's a really, um, so I think if you've taken linear algebra and know something about eigenvalues, then this would make more sense. <laughs> Until that point, you will just have to take this as a given. I think that's why my quantum mechanics professor called it postulate, because you take this as given. You don't reason it. That's just a true statement. You accept that as being true. Um, so we do this. Uh, grounding with this um, foundation laid, really the key thing that uh, you need to know is the uh, representation of these operators. So the position operator, and this is by the way in the, uh, this is in a position space, uh, which is, I'm going a little bit more abstract than, uh, we are only gonna work in position space, we're not gonna work in momentum space. So in position space, the position operator, it's actually just to x. You multiply by x, that's acting on a function with the position operator. <laughs> Momentum operator looks more interesting. It looks like, um, so it involves a derivative with respect to position. And in fact, this position, it's related to the component of the momentum that you are looking at. So x component is the derivative with respect to x. Y component is, so as an example, Y component would be related to the derivative with respect to Y and so on. And uh, this doesn't have the right units for momentum. So for the right units, you need H bar over imaginary number. <laughs> H bar over imaginary number. So this is the mo uh, operator. I think here you can more easily see that, yeah, that is on operator, as in this derivative operation, it's uh, hungry for a function to act on. It's only after you act on a function, you get something mathematically tractable that you can get a handle on and work with. And finally, the energy operator, which we don't really use as much, but um, it does get brought up, especially when you go from the time-dependent Schrodinger equation to time-independent Schrodinger equation. The energy operator, it's uh, uh, related to the derivative with respect to time. So you take the wave function, which is a function of position and time, and take the partial derivative with respect to time. And if it's an energy eigenstate, you should get the same wave function back. Uh, and I still need a coefficient here, h bar times i. I think that gives me uh, energy, yeah. So these are the uh, operators. And once you have these, then, uh, for example, Schrodinger equation. What Schrodinger equation says is this. Schrodinger equation says, well, um, momentum squared over 2m, um, that's kinetic energy, plus the potential energy, which by definition of potential energy is function of position alone. So this will give me some kind of an operator that can act on a wave function. Hey, um, kinetic energy plus potential energy, that looks like a total energy. So we say that's equal to, well, energy of the state, um, which we'll measure out of the wave function. So this is the Schrodinger equation. And I will leave it up to you to plug in these expressions for um, posi uh, momentum, position, and energy operators, and see that it does give you the second order partial differential equation that's listed in your textbook as a Schrodinger equation. So that's the recap of intro to wave mechanics, um, kind of the fundamental assumptions underlying wave mechanics, and um, because at the end of this, you have partial differential equations. It's mathematically very challenging. And as I say in lecture, uh, we'll only look at the, for complete uh, solutions, we'll only look at the simplest possible cases. Um, except for the simplest possible cases, it's really out of our, our depth to solve this partial differential equation. So we won't go there.